is just dripping <laughs> moisture. What's up, you guys? It's Susie from HeyGrillHey.com, and today we are doing it old school, low and slow, smoked ribs on the offset. It's gonna be a good time. Let's hang out and smoke some ribs. Today we are cooking St. Louis style spare ribs. And like I said, we're keeping it incredibly simple. Sweet rub, maybe a little apple cider mop, maybe a little barbecue sauce. But the focus is going to be cooking these low and slow. This isn't a wrapped rib, this isn't a foiled rib. This is just smoke and meat and a little bit of fire management today. So that's where we're gonna start, building the fire in the firebox of our offset cooker. Let's talk about building this fire. We're using an offset smoker today, which means the firebox is on one side, pulls the smoke and the heat across the top of the meat, out the smokestack. It is a really fun way to kind of slow it down and cook more old school barbecue, which is what we're doing with these ribs. We're gonna be using charcoal as a base for our heat, and then we're gonna be adding in wood chunks, uh, cherry wood today for smoke, for color, and all of that delicious flavor. So now we gotta build a fire. <laughs> uh, I like to start my charcoal with just some wax cubes and then pile the charcoal on top, but you can do this with a chimney or however you like to start charcoal in your house. It took me seven tries to find the right string. But I did. Tell me how you feel about that. <sighs> Angry and accomplished. I've never been able to do that. <laughs> We just light our wax cubes, let our charcoal catch. It'll take about 15 to 20 minutes until we have some nice ashy color on the outside of the charcoal and some nice glowing hot red embers. Now this method works with spare ribs, it works with St. Louis ribs, it works with baby back ribs. I like spare ribs. They're a little bit fattier, and that's just my style. <laughs> like me. Like Todd. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we're just gonna get them out of the package, and then do some light trimming. Look at this delight that we have been gifted in this three pack of ribs. In this three pack of ribs, one of the racks had the membrane removed, the other two did not. Now you do wanna remove the membrane for this recipe. It makes an easier bite on your ribs when they're finished, but it's important to know what it looks like when the membrane is on and when it's off. So when you open a package, you'll know what you're getting. <laughs> when the membrane's off, you can see these nice striations of fat in the meat itself. When the membrane is on, it's much thicker. It's more opaque white. It's hard to see down in between those bones. So we wanna take the membranes off of these two. There are a million different tricks for removing membranes. I honestly just use my finger to get up under the end and lift a membrane, but you can use the tip of a knife, you can use your thermometer. The most important thing is just getting a good grip. I like paper towels the best for that. This is fun. I like barbecue. Okay, I'm also gonna trim up these ribs just a little bit. This pack's already been pretty well trimmed on the back. There's not like an excess flap of meat here, which is great. But I do like to take off usually the last inch or so on these St. Louis cut ribs. They're just so thin. They don't really cook evenly. They crisp up too soon. So if I cut them off and still throw them on the smoker separately, then I get to eat a little bit of a treat a couple hours before the ribs are done. I'm also gonna flip it over, and sometimes on the top of these St. Louis cut ribs, you'll have them end in a little bit of a river of fat here, and there are some loose pieces. You can actually trim those off as well. I 
feeling good about these. I'm just gonna season them liberally on all sides with my sweet rub. This is a classic brown sugar smoked paprika based barbecue seasoning. You can pick it up in my store on my website. I also have a link in the video description for you to grab your own bottle or I have the recipe online so you can make your own at home. Give that seasoning a nice press in with the palm of your hands. Classic Susie sprinkle and slap. <laughs> Time for a refill. Killing this bottle. I have enough. I have enough. Every last more salt. Ow. Let these sit in the seasoning for just a second. I'm gonna wash my hands, clean up my board, and our smoker should be ready to put on some wood chunks and get these ribs on the grates. Smoker is rolling beautifully at 255 degrees. You can smoke these ribs anywhere between 225 and 275. All that's really going to change is the length of time that it takes for them to cook all the way through. At 250, I'm guessing these will take about four and a half hours, maybe five, but I'm just gonna pop them on the grill grates, close the lid, and I'm not even gonna look at them for the next 90 minutes. My entire attention is going to be focused on keeping this firebox full. <laughs> and the temperature in the smoker consistent. Before I pop my ribs onto the grill grates, we do want to get some smoke rolling. So I'm going to put two uh, cherry wood chunks into the smoker. Like I said, the charcoal is giving us heat. It's also giving us flavor. And these chunks are going to give us that nice, light, thin blue smoke that we want without altering the temperature in the grill itself too much. Now, as I'm getting these ribs on the smoker, one thing that I want to point out to you guys is there are hot zones on smokers like this. Over here, closer to the firebox, is certainly going to be more warm than further back. So I'm going to position my ribs a little bit away from the heat source and I'll rotate them during the cooking process as needed to help make sure they're all cooking evenly. the rib tips are going right next to the firebox because I want them to cook a little bit faster at a little bit higher temperature and I want those crispity edges on the outside. Crispity? Crispity. <laughs> about this smoker in particular it's super affordable I think it's a great intro unit for the backyard barbecue buddy uh, but it's a little bit she's a little bit temperamental <laughs> she loves perfect 75 degree blue sky conditions with no wind uh, and she'll hum right along at 250 to 275 but we have cooked on this thing in less than perfect weather conditions and it was a battle uh, there are some modifications of people that own Oklahoma Joe's and cook on them all the time. They use, you know, lava bricks to retain heat in the barrel. They use heat seal tape to keep, you know, the smoke from leaking out the door hinges. We haven't modified ours at all. And so we just tend to save her for special, beautiful, perfect condition days like today. <laughs> Our ribs have been on the smoker for about 90 minutes. The temperature is starting to drop a little bit. I don't want to lose temp in my smoker. So I'm going to pop on some more wood chunks. This should buy me another 45 minutes or so at that 250 degrees. And then we'll see, maybe I'll add another couple pieces of charcoal. <laughs> but while I'm adding the wood chips, I'm also going to pop the lid open on the smoker, spritz my ribs with a little bit of apple cider and pull off those rib tips because I think they're about done. All 
All right, friends, we're about five hours into this rib cook and we've just been adding wood chunks every 45 minutes or so, spritzing, been through a bag of wood chips, all of my spritz, and guess what? The ribs aren't done yet, but they're close. I think we probably have another 30 to 45 minutes um, and then we'll pull them off and let them rest. And I think that's gonna put us at like a full six hours for this rib cook, which is a little longer than I anticipated giving the higher temp on the smoker, but it's barbecue and you don't rush it. Especially with these low and slow style ribs, we're just gonna cook them until they're done and that's when dinner is. I've got a comfy chair, got some shade, and it smells good out here. So we're just being patient. <laughs> Do you wanna peek at them real quick though? Come peek at them real quick. Real quick. Ooh. Oh. Just about six hours, almost to the minute, into our rib cook. And these ribs are looking beautiful. They're ready to come off. And I want to show you some of the key things to look for to know that your ribs are done without relying on an internal thermometer. This rack is ready to come off. It's got a really nice bend. You can see these cracks and splits. The bones are exposed. The meat has pulled back from them on the ends about a half an inch to an inch. And they smell so fantastic. These ones are gonna come off. And I'm gonna slice this one up for cameraman slash husband Todd because he loves a dry rack of ribs. The other two need just a couple more minutes and I'm gonna baste these ones in barbecue sauce. So if you're a sauce on your ribs lover, just baste them 10 to 15 minutes before they're finished. Let that sauce tighten up on the outside. If you like them naked, just leave them be, let them go, and then slice them after they've rested for a few minutes. One of these racks is going sweet, so it's getting basted with my maple bourbon glaze. The other one we're keeping savory with my Texas style sauce. Now, the recipe for this is available on the website if you wanna make it at home, or if you're patient, we should be releasing this for you guys to purchase very soon. <laughs> just a really good day. Kind of basking in the glorious mahogany redness that you can only get with that cherry wood, this offset smoker. These are beautiful ribs. Now I get to eat one. <laughs> My friends, these are not going to be fall off the bone ribs. They're not meant to be. These are going to be tender with a lovely texture. You're gonna get a crunch on the outside from this bark that you're not able to get with a wrapped rib. And I don't know if you can tell, but this entire rib is smoke ring. <laughs> the whole Thing is pink because it just bathed in that cherry smoke the entire six hours. These are savory, they're sweet, they're smoky, they are absolutely delicious. I hope you guys give this super simple old school recipe a try at home. When you do, snap a photo, post it online, use the hashtag HeyGrillHey. That way I can see it and cheer you on on your journey to becoming a backyard barbecue hero. Catch you guys next time.